We'll start with uh, Gordon Mookie, um, who is part of the collective proper now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my coat. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not looking for a fight. <laughs> Before I start, I want to qualify uh, what I say. Um, I don't really represent uh, any other blackfellas or any organisation or any group. Uh, I'm just an example of an Aboriginal person who's talking about uh, my perception of the world that I live in. And, uh, you know, because I'm an Aboriginal person, my perception is an Aboriginal one. I say that my art is on the interface where Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal cultures converge. They come together like that. And uh, where those two cultures converge, uh, there's a lot of issues and concerns that have to be addressed. Issues like land rights, which is primary. Uh, deaths and custody, because there's a lot of police that's been killing our people once they get them in jail. And there's alcoholism, there's domestic violence, uh, uh, there's health concerns. There's all these issues, which is a direct result of colonialism. Uh, to us, colonialism is this demon that is still there on our land in our country. And it is our land in our country because we've not seceded sovereignty. We've not given up our land in our country. Uh, and like uh, from the map that you've seen earlier, there was over 500 different lands in different countries, you know. So what happened when the invaders come, there was all these little wars with the different countries, with the different nations, you know. So we didn't have the military might to form a united front to confront, you know, the British when they invite, invade, invaded our land and country. So, you know, in a sense, you know, like that fight never really, really stopped. Like the frontier is different. We were taking it to the streets and, you know, and, and demanding... Uh, our, our rights, demanding our land. Where as artists, like, our guns, our weapons, are our mediums. I was talking to a brother just a while ago, you know, it's like the paint, the, the, the video, the mediums that he used. That is the <coughs> frontier. This is where we're fighting, you know, for our rights as Aboriginal artists. It, it's hard, really, because, you know, in Australia, I feel like I'm banging my head up against the wall because, you know, the institutions. See, Australia is a racist country. It's very racist because racism is enshrined within, the, within all institutions, within their constitution, uh, because they had the white Australia policy where they didn't allow anyone in the country that wasn't white. The refugees that are fleeing their homelands are being put in concentration camps as they come there. But, you know, it's quite funny when uh, in South Africa, when uh, uh, the white South Africans was fleeing uh, you know, from uh, uh, the, the local people who are wanting their land back, you know, they just let these white South Africans into Australia without, um, without any trouble at all. And, um, and, you know, the South Africans love Australia because they know how to treat their blacks. Mm. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, they said that Australia had uh, borrowed its, its apartheid system from the Queensland Reserve System of separating our people taking their people away from them, putting them in concentration camps. But anyway, yeah, yeah, my art is, is just about addressing all concerns. And one thing about my art is I hate feeling like a victim. I hate being like a, a poor fellow me. When I do my art, the first thing I look at my art is how does that make me feel? How does it make me feel as a black fella? If I feel weak, if I feel like I'm a poor fellow me or a victim, then I'll change it. I like to make art that make my people feel strong, that make me feel strong. So, you know, um, I try not to pull my punches. If, if I want to do a bullet with John Howard's name on that bullet, when that's what it's about, I will do it, you know. I mean, some of my friends said, oh, Gordy, you'd be incited for murder, you know. <laughs> or, or you'd be, you know, get in trouble. I would if I was in another country. But in Australia, it's like Aboriginal people in Australia... We have reason to do what we do, you know, within our art. Um, proper now, for me, um, yeah, proper now is this collective that, that that's kind of it's kind of like a, a, a movement that is is starting to happen or, or is happening, I suppose, mm. uh, in in defining uh, who we are, in refining who we are. See, uh, I like to think art is an expression of who we are, it's an expression of us as Aboriginal people, it's an expression of our culture. And we, you know, represent that. But the thing is, um, like, I felt sad, in a sense, when I came into this exhibition here. 
because um, because of what is shown, you know. Like, all the work that is on show here uh, is from remote area. It's traditional. Uh, and people, well, it's, it's no different, really. This here is a mini-me to the institutions that is shown Aboriginal art back in Australia. Now, when people from overseas come to these galleries in uh, Australia and they look at it, they just see dots and barks. And then they think all Aboriginal people make art that way. But in reality, no. Only a small part of Australia, a small portion of Aboriginal artists actually make that make art that way. But people think that's what Aboriginal people do. And no doubt this institution here thinks that same too. So I felt sad that I've seen all this sort of art from traditional oriented Aboriginal people here. And uh, it's not representative of who we are as a people. Like, instead of calling this uh, what is it called? Museum of Aboriginal Art or something? Maybe it should be called Museum of Northern Territory Art, I think. Because this is what I'm seeing here. And this is what I'm seeing also in the institutions back home in Australia. Now, we are 60%, right? 60% of artists in Australia. That's Aboriginal artists. But in that 60%, how many of those Aboriginal artists are remote area artists? How many of those artists are doing traditional oriented work? Well, the majority of artists in that 60% live in the cities, live in the east, live in the south. We were the first people that was colonised. We are the people that are working on that interface where Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people come together. I've actually got, as, a, as an Aboriginal artist, I've got more in common with the white fella artists than I get, got with the traditional oriented artists, mm -hmm. see? Uh, and they tend to put us alongside traditional oriented artists. But, you know, like, our traditional brothers... Uh, we've got a word for, uh, you know, uh, mm. Aboriginal art. We call that art. There's, there's a word. Uh, I'll write it down um, if you've got a pen there. It's called Ooga Booga. Ooga Booga. And Ooga Booga is Aboriginal art for white man's spirituality. It's the white men who want our Aboriginal spirit, spirituality. And proper now, I've been saying to those white fellow artists who, are, uh, who, are, who want Aboriginal art for the spirituality, we are saying... You cannot have our spirituality without our political reality. Because those areas where all this, you know, dot painting and bark painting and things like that come from, you know, there's social problems that are running rampant. There are no seal roads going to their communities. Uh, 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 there's alcoholism. There's uh, domestic violence. There's, uh, in a lot of cases, no, no running water. Uh, you know, like, as... Uh, uh, as a, as a country, you know, um, Australia had badly neglected uh, Aboriginal people. And, uh, I mean, that's... Yeah, now that's why I'm sad when I come here and, and see, you know, our art being portrayed internationally and being portrayed, you know, uh, in the major galleries and, and still, you know, our people are living in the, those conditions. I perceive that the representation, how it is now, is like a colonial representation where they only put forward traditional oriented work because it is non-threatening, uh, because it doesn't cause them to look at our reality and what exactly happened. And, and not only that, like, it's not about now. What they want is our traditional people to make art about that, the dreaming of how they lived way back then. And it's good, you know, because, you know, they're hunting goannas, they're, 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 they're doing ceremony. They're encouraging our people, our traditional people, to do work like that. When yet, you know, our people that's living on that land and that country should be making art about, you know, things that are happening now. But we're positioned in such a way by the major institutions that is not real, that is, that, is, that is away from our reality of how it exactly is. And that per perception is on their terms rather than ours. And, 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 and I really feel empower, uh, disempowered simply because um, I haven't got the tools and the mechanism to put right that wrong straight away, now. <laughs>